Greetings to you, extinct ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program Views and the Continent. Today we want to dive into another pressing issue, and of course uh, that has the uh, effect or that is affecting uh, the socioeconomic development of uh, developing nations uh, around uh, the world, especially as far as the African continent is concerned. Uh, this issue is, of course, uh, the debt distress or debt uh, crisis uh, specifically. We are going to focus uh, on uh, the uh, challenges faced by uh, the African nations as they thrive or strive to find a uh, delicate equilibrium between responsibility and uh, global cooperation in seeking viable solutions. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda addressing uh, during his address uh, to the uh, recent uh, uh, UN uh, General Assembly underlined that developing countries are constrained by debt crisis, including higher cost of borrowing, which according to him causes economic disparities and uh, slows down collective efforts towards attaining sustainable development goals. It should be noted that in recent years, Africa has been struggling with a mountain debt burden hampering its progress towards sustainable development. According to the African Development Bank Group, uh, by the end of 2020, Africa's total external debt stood at a shocking $583 billion, representing a 35% increase since the year 2010. This accounts for approximately one third of the continent's total GDP. Such extensive debt levels demand urgent attention and highlights the critical need for a concerted global response. However, to further comprehend the gravity of this crisis, it is crucial to examine the trends within Africa's debt landscape. The World Bank highlights that recent years have witnessed an increase in debt distress among several African countries. As of 2020, 18 of uh, 54 African nations were classified as being in debt distress or at risk of slipping into it. Thus, there is the urgent need for collective or collaborative action to address Africa's debt crisis. Resolving this crisis requires not only responsible borrowing practices from African nations, but also robust global cooperation in the form of responsible lending, debt relief mechanisms, and sustainable economic development initiatives. And of course, uh, that is what we are going to discuss in today's edition of the program Views on the Continent, an informative and as well uh, uh, interactive uh, program, of course, uh, capitalizing on an aspect which uh, the Rwandan leadership underlined while delivering his address at the just concluded United Nations General Assembly, which focused on how uh, debt uh, stress or debt crisis is hampering or slowing down the economic trajectory of uh, many uh, developing countries, especially in Africa. Uh, you are most uh, welcome. If you are just joining, this is Views on the Continent. Just to underline uh, that, uh, uh, among other things, uh, the discussions on today will focus on areas like uh, uh, the impact of debt crisis on uh, development nations. Also, we'll look at the, the responsibility of uh, debt and creditor nations uh, and of course the role of global cooperation in uh, bringing resolve to the debt distress and uh, finally also focusing on uh, the uh, balancing economic growth and uh, debt uh, uh, sustainability you are most welcome looking forward to having a constructive and thought provoking uh, uh, debate session uh, with you uh, uh, gentlemen and uh, lady just to invite a television viewers of that they can follow us live as well on facebook at Africa media tv you can leave your comment uh, regarding our topic for discussion this day thank you once uh, more uh, noting uh, that uh, uh, since the advent of the covid 19 and from the time that the world health organization uh, uh, announced that it is no longer 
after a health crisis or an emergency, now countries have been struggling uh, to bring back uh, their economies on track. But then th this aspect of uh, uh, debt uh, dis uh, distress or debt crisis affecting the African continent uh, is a call for concern. And of course, uh, why we're here to address uh, this. Before we go into tour, into analyzing, I will invite uh, with the consent uh, of the producer, uh, let's listen uh, to the uh, part of the excerpt uh, presented by President Paul Kagame in his latest uh, recent address to the United Nations Security Council. And I will join you right after that. Developing countries are constrained by a debt crisis, including higher costs of borrowing. This is causing economic disparities to widen and slowing down our collective progress towards the sustainable development goals. The primary cause of this crisis is high interest rates in developed economies in order to correct for years of quantitative easing. At the same time, developing countries face exaggerated risk premiums for both currency and political risk, which are simply unjustified. We need serious cooperation to address this. In developing countries, we also have a responsibility to be accountable for the quality of our financial governance and the management of our natural resources. Increasing access to finance also requires reform of our global financial institutions. In this regard, we welcome the proposals of the Bridgetown Initiative, as well as the Paris Summit for a new global financing pact. Rwanda also supports the second replenishment of the Green Climate Fund to create the fiscal space for vulnerable nations to tackle climate change. Africa and small island developing states, many of which are represented in the Commonwealth, want to work with the partners and be part of the solution. That is an important outcome of the recent African Climate Summit held in Nairobi under the leadership of President William Ruto. However, we must not only cool down on climate, we must also cool down on conflict. Today, there is no sign of ongoing conflicts ending anytime soon. We do not even see hope from those with the most influence that an end is in sight. Innocent lives are left alone to carry the burden of this instability. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, that is an excerpt of uh, President Paul Kagame's speech. And we're focusing on a debt uh, crisis. We dive straight away uh, to the debate uh, proper. Uh, I would uh, like to start with you, uh, uh, Chenil Tire. Today, we are looking at uh, resolving a uh, debt crisis in developing countries and seeing how uh, this can be balanced or we can have uh, balanced uh, responsibility and gro uh, global cooperation. Uh, before uh, tackling our core questions regarding this, let's understand uh, what a debt crisis is all about and how a country can actually, what can happen before a country is considered to be in debt uh, dis uh, distress, uh, taking uh, the uh, developing countries, especially in Africa as a case study. Thank you so much. Um, I hope my connection holds. So, I mean, 
like you've alluded to, debt is neither good nor bad. So many countries in the world um, run on debt. Uh, the US, as one example, being the largest economy in the world, is also one of the most indebted. But then a country is said to be entering debt distress or debt crisis when they are no longer able to service their debt. So it's not bad to take the loans or to take the debt on, um, even as a country, as a sovereign state. But then the important thing that you need to do for your partners, for your lenders, is that you need to be able to service the debts because debt usually comes with some particular terms. Um, and when they hit maturity, and even before they hit maturity, um, there's some interest rates that you have to pay. So I can use Nigeria as an example. Um, we were taking on a, a debt and interestingly, a lot of our debt was domestic, but when it comes to the foreign debt, um, there was a question of did we have enough revenue to be able to service our debt because when you cannot service your debt then it means that you cannot access more debt or that um, more debt becomes just more difficult for you to get and then you get stuck developmentally and then you can now have other um, wider macroeconomic implications for your economy so yes a debt distress again is when countries have gotten into a debt position that they cannot sustain um, which can now prevent them from accessing more debt that is often needed for, for carrying out development projects. Uh, listening to you, please, uh, can you actually uh, elucidate more on this uh, question, like how can uh, developing nations uh, 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 strike a balance between borrowing for economic growth and also avoiding unsustainable debt levels? Yeah, and it's a very key question because you know, when you borrow money or when you lend, when you when you take on debts, the question is, what do you spend it on? Because when you take on debts today, the idea is that you're going to spend the debts on things that will make sure that tomorrow um, you're able to repay the debt or you're able to service the debt. So you're supposed to carry out some particular kinds of investments that will increase your or improve your revenue position as a country. But I think as African countries, we've struggled to find that exact mix of projects because we do a lot of social investment projects, so which is more welfare. Welfare is very important. It's very good. But if you don't have the right balance between welfare and between economic investment, then you can just be borrowing to spend, so borrowing for consumption, but instead of borrowing for production or borrowing to make sure that tomorrow you're not going back to your debtors, you know, to ask for even more debt. So that's the, the key to sustainability. You borrow today, but then make sure that you have a good mix of projects. So projects that are growing the economy, because when you, when you talk about revenues of governments, where is it coming from? It's coming from um, taxation. So taxation on economic activities, whether it's from businesses or personal income, or whether it's even from trade. Um, so you're, you're borrowing to invest in those activities to make sure that they expand to an extent that in the future, in the mid to long term, um, they can now even begin to sustain your own spending um, as a government, or at least sustain your, your general profile, whether it's your debt profile um, or your revenue profile. So that's the key there that we have been struggling to, to figure out, really.